Good happy Tuesday evening, January 19, 2021. Good evening, everyone. We have a jam packed broadcast this evening right here on the Riley King Network. Welcome to the Riley King Newscast. Let's begin this evening broadcast. First step, we're going to begin and take a look at your COVID-19 dashboard from John Hopkins University and Medicine. Let's take a look at that right now. And here is a look at the information for all of you right now. Your global cases are 96 million 690. Your US cases are 24 million 227 835. Your global deaths are 2,054,132. Your U.S. deaths are 401,288. And that is a look at your COVID-19 dashboard from John Hopkins University in Medicine. Now, let's get to your other news. President Donald Trump released a farewell address. Trump didn't mention Joe Biden by name once in the 20-minute remarks. President Donald Trump on Tuesday, on his final full day in office, and after having been out of the public view for more than a week, released a taped farewell address to the nation. Seeking to rebuild a badly damaged legacy just hours before he was set to leave the Washington behind. Let's take a look at that farewell address that he did. Very truly magnificent nation. All Americans were horrified by the assault on our capital. Political violence is an attack on everything we cherish as Americans. It can never be tolerated. Now more than ever, we must unify around our shared values and rise above the partisan rancor and forge our common destiny. It was about America first because we all wanted to make America great again. We restored the principle that a nation exists to serve its citizens. Our agenda was not about right or left. It wasn't about Republican or Democrat, but about the good of a nation. And that means the whole nation. With the support and prayers of the American people, we achieved more than anyone thought possible. Nobody thought we could even come close. We achieved a series of historic peace deals in the Middle East. Nobody believed it could happen. The Abraham Accords opened the doors to a future of peace and harmony, not violence and bloodshed. It is the dawn of a new Middle East, and we are bringing our soldiers home. I am especially proud to be the first president in decades who has started no new wars. Above all, we have reasserted the sacred idea that in America, the government answers to the people. Our guiding light, our North Star, our unwavering conviction has been that we are here to serve the noble, everyday citizens of America. Our allegiance is not to the special interests, corporations, or global entities. It's to our children, our citizens, and to our nation itself. As president, my top priority, my constant concern, has always been the best interests of American workers and American families. I did not seek the easiest course. By far, it was actually the most difficult. I did not seek the path that would get the least criticism. I took on the tough battles, the hardest fights, the most difficult choices, because that's what you elected me to do. Your needs were my first and last unyielding focus. This, I hope, will be our greatest legacy. Now, as I prepare to hand power over to a new administration at noon on Wednesday, I want you to know that the movement we started is only just beginning. There's never been anything like it. The belief that a nation must serve its citizens will not dwindle. 
but instead only grow stronger by the day as long as the American people hold in their hearts deep and devoted love of country, then there is nothing that this nation cannot achieve. Our communities will flourish. Our people will be prosperous. Our traditions will be cherished. Our faith will be strong. And our future will be brighter than ever before. I go from this majestic place with a loyal and joyful heart and optimistic spirit and a supreme confidence that for our country and for our children, the best is yet to come. Thank you and farewell. God bless you. God bless the United States. That was just a portion. Okay, and there you go on that farewell speech from President Donald Trump. We can tell you that President Donald Trump will not be going to the inauguration tomorrow. He will be leaving Washington, D.C. early. And we do have word that Vice President Mike Pence will not be attending Donald Trump's farewell celebration. Mike Pence, Vice President Mike Pence instead will be going to the inauguration on Capitol Hill for Joe Biden. Biden-Harris hold a memorial for Americans lost to COVID-19. Just hours before they are to be sworn into office, President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris honored the 400,000 Americans who have died as a result of the novel coronavirus with a tribute in front of the Lincoln Memorial reflecting pool. After an invitation, Harris called on Americans to stand together. For many months, we have graved by ourselves. Tonight, we grave and begin healing together. Though we may be physically separated, we, the American people, are united in spirit, she said. Biden thanked the country's nurses and also echoed the call for unity. To heal, we must remember, and it's hard sometimes to remember, but that's how we heal, he said. As the ceremony ended, 400 lights along the pool were lit up to symbolize the lives lost. Church bells rang ring around the country in unis and gospels singer yolanda adams sung leonardo cohen's hallelujah biden's plan dozens of executive actions in the first day the 46th president will sign directives on pandemic, climate, and race. No longer after he takes the presidential oath on Wednesday, Joe Biden will use the power of his pen and begin a sweeping transformation of U.S. policy through dozens of executive orders, presidential memorandums, and other official directives. Here's a step-by-step -step look at what is planned for Inauguration Day tomorrow. Let's take a look at that video in that report from the Riley King Network. step-by-step -step look at what is planned for Inauguration Day. President-elect Joe Biden is set to become the nation's 46th president Wednesday, tomorrow, taking his oath atop the steps of the U.S. Capitol building. The inauguration will 
seen like no other in American history. Hot off the heels of a historic storming of the same building earlier in the month, screwed on by the president that Biden will replace. More than 20,000 National Guard troops will be in the Washington, D.C. as a safeguard. At the same time, a once-in-a-century pandemic has all but erased normal life for Americans and the world. Major events were postponed, canceled, or completely changed. The inauguration is no different, with an incoming president asking for supporters not to attend the event and crowd size expected to be kept small. The timetable for the day will be more flexible than in previous years, with only certain events pinned to specific times. Here is the planned order of events to usher in the presidency. Here's a look at how festivities will play out. The first event, our White House, an inaugural celebration for young Americans. A first ever created live stream for young Americans before and during the inaugural ceremony. The live stream will be hosted by award-winning entertainer and advocate Kiki Palmer. It will feature a message from incoming First Lady Jill Biden, historian Doris Goodwin, and Eric Armstrong Dunbar, expert of student voices from PBS News Hour Student Reporting Lab. We and the young people and segments from the Library of Congress. The live stream will also feature trivia questions and even a segment of presidential pets produced by Nickelodeon. The event will be live streamed from bidenaugural.org slash youth and the PIC's YouTube channel. Inaugural ceremony. The main event. Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris will be sworn in on the west front of the U.S. Capitol building and take their oath of office. Afterwards, Biden will deliver an inaugural address, laying out his vision for the future, almost certainly covering his plans for the pandemic and to heal a divided nation. Past in review. After the ceremony, the now President Biden and new First Lady with the now Vice President Harris and Second Gentleman Douglas M. Off will participate in a Pass in Review on the East Front with members of the military. The Pass in Review is a military tradition that is meant to reflect a peaceful transition of power between administrations. Brief laying at the Arlington National Cemetery. The Bidens with Harris and M. Hoff will then visit Arlington National Ceremony Cemetery to lay a wreath at a tomb of an unknown soldier. They will be joined by former President Barack Obama and Michelle Obama, former President George W. Bush and Laura Bush, and former President Bill Clinton and Secretary Hillary Clinton. Presidential Escort Biden will then receive a presidential escort from 15th Street to the White House. Every branch of the military will be represented in the escort, including 
a U.S. Army branch, a Joint Service Honor Guard, and the Commander-in-Chief Guard, and if, and Drum Corps, from the 3rd U.S. Infantry, the Old Guard. Virtual Parade Across America. In place of a regular parade, and to observe social distancing, Biden and Harris escort will be followed by a parade across America, which will be televised and feature diverse dynamic performances in communities across the country. Celebrating America Primetime Special. Celebrating America, a 90-minute primetime program hosted by Tom Hanks, will feature remarks from both Biden and Harris and include remarks and performances that represent the rich diversity and extensive talent America offers. The special will feature Inc. Holmes, John Bon Jovi, Foo Fighters, John Legend, Eva Lagoria, Demi Lovato, Bruce Springsteen, Justin Timberlake, and Kerry Washington. And that is a look at the step-by-step -step look at what is planned tomorrow for Inauguration Day. That's it for this news report right here on the Riley King Network. Thank you for watching. I'm Riley King for the Riley King Network. Goodbye, everyone. Okay, and there you go on that report. And let's see how your U.S. stock market closed for this. Tuesday evening. And here's a check of that U.S. stock market for all of you for this Tuesday evening. Your Dow Joe Industrial Average closed in green and went up. Your Nasdaq closed in green and went up. S&P 500 closed in green and went up. Gold closed in green and went up. Oil closed in green and went up. U.S. 10 year closed flat. Your slash USD closed in green and went up. And VX closed in the red and went down. And let's take a look at the weather across the United States for this evening. And here's a check of the weather across the United States for this evening for all of you. In Boston, 29 degrees. New York City, 35 degrees. Washington, D.C., 31 degrees. Atlanta, 40 degrees. Jacksonville, Florida, 42 degrees. Tampa Bay, Florida, 46 degrees. Miami, Florida, 69. Two degrees, sorry about that. Dallas, Texas, 46 degrees. Phoenix, 60 degrees. Las Vegas, 49 degrees. Los Angeles, 56 degrees. And San Francisco, 47 degrees. And that is a look at the weather across the United States for this evening. And thank you for joining us for this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Be sure to join us for special coverage of inauguration all day tomorrow right here on the Riley King Network where we bring you excellent coverage of the inauguration. Thank you for joining us for this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast on the Riley King Network. Have a great evening and see you back here tomorrow with more news coverage. I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Good night and goodbye everyone.